Inside Hustle Elevator. My name is Benjamin Portnoy, and with me today I have Stephanie Smith. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and I didn't really plan that we're color coordinated here, honestly. I, <laughs> I totally <laughs> planned it. I knew what you were wearing. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> You're a fashion designer. I wanted to uh, make sure we're, we're on, right on the same page. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> So we, uh, we've been having a few little technical issues. If you guys see a glitch here, I uh, just trust we'll be back in a second, but uh, we're, uh, we're hoping uh, to the, the gods of vegan suede that everything will be okay. Um, so Stephanie Smith is a multi-passionate fashion designer who became a top 1% Etsy seller, earning over $183,000, all while homeschooling her high-functioning autistic daughter and running multiple businesses, including her Etsy shop, Beaded Tassel Company. Now she teaches others how to start and grow their Etsy shops with the Easy As Pie, or P-I-E, Etsy Shop Workshop, and her mission, I love this, her mission to spark creativity and reset the broken inspiration button on every single human she comes in contact with. That is right. That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, just let's dive right in here. How'd you get started in e-commerce and Etsy? What's the timeline been like? And uh, just give us a quick overview. Sure. So I've been a fashion designer for over 20 years. I have my own clothing line that I organically grew. Uh, just started with fitness wear. It's called Oh My Bod. And I started that and grew with the, I did the brick and mortar space for 20 years and I'm still in. I have my very last brick and mortar store, which I'm going to be uh, closing in about six months because the rents are getting just outrageous. So I'm- yeah. Focusing everything on, you know, in online. And of course, that is the wave of the future. But um, so I started with that and it's been my passion and, and my love. But I also have so many different passions. I love teaching and inspiring and creating. And and it's like I can't contain myself. I'm up at three o'clock in the morning thinking of my business ideas. And uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I'm one of those that I, I don't I don't run out of uh, ideas. That's always been Actually, it's a good thing, but for some people, it's a problem because then you can't focus. Yeah. So, um, so about three years ago, it's actually three years almost to the day where I uh, was thinking about opening um, just a little side hustle. Again, I like opening businesses. I kind of very. I have ADD when it comes to business. You know, <laughs> so I'm always like I'm trying new things, testing new things. I have like no fear. So. Yeah, about three years ago, I my former boss, who I worked for in the fashion world before I started my business, I found out that she was on Etsy and she was crushing it. I think she was doing like six figures selling her fashion. So I said, well, you know, I got to get on Etsy. And I opened up um, just a small little shop at first with my, my fashion. I didn't really do much. I only have just a few listings. But then I said, I'm going to do something and just like something out of the ordinary. And I just started putting up my... my uh, beads and tassels and things that I were ma I was making on the side as, um, you know, just being a creative person. And lo and behold, the business just started exploding because I found out there was a need and real big need for uh, supplies, beading supplies and, and unique, uh, you know, items for people to create their jewelry with. So, that grew from nothing zero to now almost it's a, about one hundred and eighty four thousand dollars in income part time. And it's been just a wild ride because I just was so consistent with adding products. And now I source products. I do wholesale. That's a whole nother business. I do wholesale. I do. Uh, I source products from all over the world. I have products designed for my Etsy business. And it just grew literally just organically out of nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been it's been great. That's fantastic. That's very cool. And by the way, if you see me typing here and making notes and coming up with uh, additional questions. So um, so tell us, where do you want to start? That's a, a fantastic intro, but it, it kind of forks the road here. Why don't we how do you feel about starting with beaded tassel and sure. talking specifically about that? So. Uh, you said you identified this need for beading supplies. 
How did you identify that? What were, where were you looking? Where did this come from where you recognized, okay, there's a hole in the market. I can take care of this and build a business out of it, even if it's a side hustle. Yeah. So, and actually it could be a huge business, you know, like a, a crazy, crazy business. I really run with it, but because yeah. I have so many other passions, I I'm just choosing to keep it like tamed, you know, yeah. We have to choose where we want to put our energy into and and do i really want that so um to answer your question so i knew that tassels at the time about three years ago you know tassels like we beaded and all different shapes and sizes of tassels were super fashion trend in the business so i said well why not i started making some of these tassels out of denim and they were very cool and funky and the very first few weeks i was starting to get some sales and I said, well, this really could be something. And these were people looking to buy these finished tassels and then incorporate them in their designs. Mm -hmm. So when I first started out, as soon as I got my first few sales and then another and then another, and I realized I've got something here. And sometimes that's what you have to do in business. You just have to test and try, test and try. And you know what? And sometimes a lot of things don't work. And then occasionally right off the bat, you get a home run. You know, awesome. yeah. So what I started to do is I committed myself. I said, okay, I am going to commit myself to add just a few products every day until I hit 500. I had 500 at one time products on my shop. And, you know, I believe it's the consistency of putting those products up every day, seeing what's working and then also filling that hole in the market um, for supplies that attributed to my success. Yeah. Okay. And where, I mean, are these being made? Are they, are you sourcing them? Where is the, the actual, where are the products coming from? So I originally started making a lot of my own products and plus I had some beads laying around and I was just selling extra supplies that I had purchased for my jewelry making because I do make jewelry as well for my store. And so it was a combination of everything. And it was kind of just, it, I don't know, it just like happened that I just started, all of a sudden I started sourcing out. First I was in, went to China and I saw, uh, I'm working with one company that does fantastic. You know, sometimes you think of China as everything being junky and it's not. Like I work with a fantastic company right now that produces anything that I want to make. Plus they also have their own line. So. Uh, I came from China. Then I've, I had someone reach out to me from Turkey and he makes unbelievable tassels that are um, fortune carat gold plated and just beautiful. And those did really well. So I had someone I'm importing from Turkey from um, kind of like three, four different countries. And um, so it's a combination and not, I'm not making as much myself right now. It's more sourcing, but that's uh, that's allowed on Etsy. You know, Etsy allows you to source supplies. If you're a supplier, mm -hmm. you just can't, you know, you, you know, some people might not even know actually what Etsy is. Do you want me to explain what Etsy is? I do, but let's finish your thought because okay. I'm going to take that down a whole new, uh, okay. whole new okay. route. So, so yeah, that's what I do. It's mostly sourcing right now, but I do design a lot of my products and then we mass produce them. Okay. That's awesome. Um, Yes, let's because I, I had we have all kinds of new branches to go down, but we'll save that. Yeah, we'll be here for twenty years if you want to really. But we're going <laughs> to focus. Well, you're a busy person, so <laughs> I want to respect your time too. Um, so I actually know very little about Etsy. I, of course, know what it is. Some people might not, and I definitely want you to explain it. But I also I know it's evolved quite a bit since it started. So please speak to the evolution of it too, and how it's changed, what it's become and what the opportunities are. Okay. So Etsy is a platform where creative entrepreneurs come, but not only buy, sell their items, but of course, buy, purchase their items. And um, it, it's been, it started, uh, I don't know the exact date it started, um, but I do know now that they are publicly traded. I think last year they did about $603 million in uh, revenue. And they are growing year over year. And it's what I love about Etsy is that they really are very, they, they got, they have their customer down to a T. The, the Etsy platform does not allow you to purchase items like items from China, unless it's a supply. They have, if it's a finished product, 
something that you created or your your team created. They're very, very specific. And that's why they have this amazing platform that people truly know it's like a unique handmade product. So they did yeah. really well and they are, um, they're growing because they do a lot of personalization. The, the, the creators do a lot of personalization. Think about like invites, um, birth announcements, all those things for parties, you know, that's a huge niche. There's just so many niches on Etsy that you can, can go with, but it's a, just a fantastic platform and it's free to get started. You can start a shop with zero. So it's really a great way as, as opposed to Shopify paying 30 something a month or some other platforms, you know? Okay, good. And so it's, it's easy to start anything but you've been succeeding and you coach people on how to succeed. So let's talk about just some little bits as far as that goes. How do you uh, recommend, let's start with choosing a niche, a niche. What's, uh, you've obviously been in jewelry and fashion and clothing for a long time. Let's say somebody's creative, but they don't know which direction to go. That's a common problem, actually, Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, uh, the problem is that people actually have too many interests and they don't focus. So yeah. what I recommend is I have, I actually have several courses on this. One is what should I sell on Etsy to help you focus what your passion is combined with what you're good at and what the market is looking for, for that win, you know, that, that, um, that like the, the whole thing is the whole package is there. And then in my other um, course that I recently introduced and we just did a beta, which is actually my students are getting fantastic results is um, the easy as pie, which is passive income Etsy shop, PIE, the acronym for passive. And that's where you can actually use a print on demand company, another company to fulfill your orders. You just need to design. So it's actually a brilliant way to get started if you don't know what to sell. But what I recommend is you first thing is you need to like what you what you're going to be selling. If you're mm -hmm. selling something you're not interested in, you're not going to be able to create a business out of it because in the long term, you're going to just lose interest and it's going to be more of an effort. So number yeah, number one, definitely enjoy the, the, the theme, the topic, the niche, and then also do your market research. And we dive into that in, in my courses about how to do that with keywords and, you know, research and uh, just looking for those holes in the market or those long tail keywords, they call them, where people are more specific in their searches. And that's how you can be successful, finding those super niche and those real, you know, the, the areas where not a lot of people are willing to go. That's excellent. And so you talk about your courses. Are these all available on Business be Chic Mama? Business Chic Mama. Mm -hmm. Oh, watch this. Hey! There you go. <laughs> Actually, the easiest pie is not open right now. I'm just accepting uh, just the signups. And then we'll be launching again in a couple of weeks because I actually am coaching people through the whole process. And that's where I find where the success comes in. Most people will quit as soon as they get their shop up and running and they don't get sales in two weeks and then they're done. Yeah. And that's something I want to talk about too. It's I find it's so easy to start things and that really is the failing especially with a lot of how things are taught and marketed and advertising advertised these days that you can start a business in 10 minutes and it's yeah. like, sure, well, I can start running for a uh, governor of the state in 10 yeah. minutes. That doesn't yeah. mean I'm going to follow through with it, nor that it would I really want to. Um, but it's, that is, let's talk about that. When, what's the secret to seeing it through, especially on dark days, you seem like an exceptionally positive and driven person. Um, how, for people who are uh, getting into this, how do you stay that way through the tough times? It's such, it's everything you say is just so on point, man. It is, I tell you, that's why most businesses fail. And I talk about this a lot on my YouTube channel and in my courses, I do a whole section in the beginning of my course about, I call it the mob mentality, mm -hmm. successful Sarah and Sam. So the mob mentality is most people, when they get into business, they're excited. Um, and this is the mobs. It's a real thing. This is not like a fantasy. The mob people get excited and then all of a sudden they crash and then they're done. And this mob mentality is 
because they don't have even the realization of how a successful entrepreneur thinks. Digging in the dirt, doing the stuff the average person won't. This is the Sarah and Sam, um, you know, digging in the dirt, doing stuff that won't people, other people won't try. Um, when you don't see results right away, you just keep at it and you keep trying new angles and new tactics. And um, that's really the difference is, you know, there's so many times, even when I started my YouTube channel about two years ago, I started with zero. I mean, I didn't even tell my friends and family I was doing this. I started with zero and I just did a review of a product it was a course that I took a very expensive course. And now that YouTube video has 14,000 views on it. That's great. But I'm telling you two years ago, if I would have quit and never continued. And, and even though I didn't see anything for six months, I don't even think I got 10 followers for three months. And now I have over, you know, it's about almost 13, 13, 1400 followers. And this is again, a very side thing that I do. This is nothing I promote every day. Yeah. All it is, it's the consistent action daily whether it's up or down or anywhere in between no matter what it is you're just committed to your your whatever it is that you're doing do you have any kind of daily uh, affirmations what is it that consistently daily discipline keeps you positive uh well um for me it's my faith in god and jesus mm -hmm. i'm a christian and mm -hmm. i i tell you what i talk about the bible all the time i'm not ashamed and even if whatever your listeners are, this is not to be offensive to anyone, but I have Lord. to tell you, I, my wisdom comes from the Bible. It is insane. I talked the other day, my YouTube video was about, uh, talked about sowing and reaping. I it was, saw it. You did you? Okay. Yeah. So here's the problem. Everyone wants to reap, but no one wants to sow. That's it in a nutshell. Okay. That's why, you know, people think they're going to get rich quick because they haven't sowed anything yet. You've got to do the work you've got. So uh, a lot of my faith and my energy, it just comes from my biblical faith and uh, just knowing that I can make an impact in the world. And it's not just to take, take, take. I truly want to give, give, give. And that's my, I'm just like fueled to help people. I'm fueled to refresh people. I'm fueled to inspire people. We need that these days. I, I feel like the world has become very much about me and taking and uh, the more people can give the more they find success true i've i've heard that it's um i think it has to do with tithing actually the that the more you give and donate and that you find it back and there's some mystical uh it's not based in rational reasoning it just happens yeah you know the bible talks a lot about uh finances money and tithing and and you know tithing is also because what happens is when we hoard things for ourselves and our you know our money and our and our gifts and our talents there's there's just something that happens that you don't get these blessings and it's not you give to get you just truly give to 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 give and it, it does it does come back to you yeah have you ever seen the show the good place no i haven't it's uh, it it's not a traditional. It doesn't follow traditional Christian beliefs, um, but it's about loose versions of heaven and hell, and people's motivation and corresponding actions. I as have far to write as that one down. <laughs> yeah, and it's it kind of follows a philosophical, uh, you know, a lot of philosophy. We don't need to go too far down that line. But. Right. Right. It's a great show. Yeah. So um, talk about that. Talk about building a tribe and getting reviews. How You know, you didn't get followers for three months, but eventually you did and you've built a brand out of it. You're very good at branding. So talk about that. How do you do that? Well, first of all, I don't think I'm very good at branding, to be honest right. with you. <laughs> okay. But thank you. Um, I disagree, but okay. Uh, you know, again, I could tell anyone that's listening to do, don't do certain mistakes that I did, which was, um, I'll give you an example with my, my clothing line. Oh, my bod. I must've changed the logo, um, 10 times. And that now in retrospect, such a waste of time. Do not think your branding is what is making your business. Okay. So I just wanted to, that's a side note. Uh -huh. Um, cause I see people all the time, they're changing their logo, then they're changing again, then they're changing the colors and all of their energy is wasted on things that are not building their business. So the, I, the only thing that 
is a, that I can attribute the growth of my YouTube channel is the consistency of making a commitment and trying new things. And, you know, even the first year, I only posted a handful of videos. But when I started to become serious about it, uh, every single week I put at least one video out. That's when the magic happens. And now I'm starting to monetize my YouTube channel. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Which is not as easy as it used to be. Not at all. You have to have a thousand subscribers and 40,000. I think it's 4,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say uh, view, uh, but yeah, no, it's at 4,000 hours. So yeah, it is not easy. So that's why it's about to be that consistent action. And, and again, most people would have just given up. And if you can take away, if your audience can take away anything from this interview, consistency over time equals success. Make that note, that. There, Benjamin. Yep. It's true. I don't care what it is, working out, your marriage, your children, your finances, consistency over time. And this is, you know, you figure out what is working and what isn't working. That's where the consistency comes in. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, you have to do a business by a kind of trial and error, especially if you're someone that doesn't have a whole team behind you. Mm -hmm. That's a different story when you have just tons of money and you can outsource everything. But we're talking about the solo entrepreneur, the someone just starting out. You're the solo person doing everything. Yeah. So there's something to be said about, obviously, we're talking about staying committed, focused, and um, and consistent. But what if you're starting out with an idea that's inevitably not going to work because the market's there? How do you, or not there, rather, how do you do that ahead of time? Well, I would suggest really rethinking if you don't have a market there at all, it's really hard nowadays to create a market. If you don't have money for advertising, mm -hmm. you're going to be like going backwards because you're spending all your time creating a market, unless you do your market research and you know that there's holes in the market and that's something that people are looking for. So if you have a completely brand new product that no one's ever heard of, you got to spend money on getting people educated first. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could try if it's someone you have an idea and there's people that are interested in the space, your spinoff is that unique thing that will make your product special. So that's maybe an you want to go with, but something completely new, that's really hard to do. Okay. What if you have, let's back away from the market aspect of it, but there are a lot of people out there with no money who want to start an Etsy shop or want to start a, an e-commerce business or a side hustle. Uh, what do you recommend if you don't have any money? You're starting from zero. Well, Etsy is a perfect example. It doesn't cost you anything to actually be a seller on Etsy. You can mm -hmm. start from zero and it's only 20 cents to list an item. So we're talking no, nothing. If you work like the, the course that I teach, the easiest pie Etsy shop, you can work with a print on demand company. You don't have to pay anything until your product actually sells. So what you're doing on Etsy is creating mock-ups, which are just pictures of the item. Then when the item sells, it goes right to the print on demand company. They, they print it for you, you pay for it, and you are not at zero out of pocket until the item sells. And then Etsy takes a small fee, about 5%. And, um, and that's it. So that is one, call it the zero risk way of starting a business. It really is. It's, it's actually probably the easiest way to start a business. If you're willing to commit and try new things and, and, uh, you know, just commit to doing what it takes. Yeah. Print on demand is so cool. It's the technology has come so far. Um, let's say you can't pay it, you know, I, some ways to get designs to make print on demand is to go to fiverr.com or to uh, go to upwork.com. But what if you don't have the money to spend on that? What do you recommend as far as getting started? Are there any tools you like? That's what I teach my students. It's, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Canva, you uh -huh. can do all your designs on Canva and there's also PicMonkey and uh, those are the two. I don't, I don't outsource my designs. I do them right on those two. I actually, I, in my, in my course, the easiest pie Etsy shop, I actually started a brand new Etsy shop mm -hmm. to show everyone how to do it from, 
from the inception of the idea all the way through to now I'm, I've already made organic sales in the past month. It's only been, a, um, my course has only been open about a month, my beta. And I have uh, several students already making sales and not everybody is making sales, but we're figuring out why with all the mm -hmm. members and everything. So it's all tight knit community right now. And it's amazing. So yeah, everything can be done basically on a dime. That's awesome. That's very cool. I actually made the YouTube card for our interview on Canva. Yeah. Uh, I, Canva. <laughs> yeah. I was an Adobe guy for 20 years and I still use it. I use Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator all the time, but Canva has, it's not making those things obsolete, but just for the, the casual user who just needs something done, it's sure. so easy. It's great. It truly is. And if you don't know about Canva, it's free to sign up. There is a, an upgrade, but it's an amazing platform for your Instagram photos, your YouTube cover, anything you want. You can do an invitation. You can do a book cover. Um, it is, it's a game changer. Everybody uses it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, we're hitting a lot of these, these uh, questions. What it, well, here's one. What do you think about uh, going to influencers as far as sending, you, you create something, you want a mention from somebody who's a YouTube influencer or a social media influencer, Pinterest. Um, what do you think about uh, leveraging influencers? Well, I personally don't use influencers for my business, but I do research a lot because I actually am on Pinterest um, with a nice following, about 25,000 uh, that's great. Not followers, but that's where my views are. Okay. And Pinterest is a huge, huge opportunity because, you know, Pinterest, when you pin something, it stays alive for months, even a year or two, your pin could stay living forever. So if you learn how to do Pinterest correctly, which is optimizing your pins, and um, there's like a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother <laughs> interview. But Pinterest is an amazing way to get eyes on your products. Um, influencers, of course, obviously they work, but I think you need to know what you're doing. Maybe you need, to, you know, first of all, probably need to just start asking the influencers if they want to work with you. But a lot of influencers won't work with like small companies, you know, yeah. if they're really big. So definitely a lot of testing involved. And I say anything goes in business. What works for one person may not work for another person. So you've got to do a lot of testing in your business and see what works and get into your groove. So be willing to try different things, research them, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, give us, I, like you said, Pinterest could be its own interview yeah, uh, or course, yeah. um, but give us some best practices, uh, just sort of the, maybe the 32nd version of how to use Pinterest to get more eyeballs. Sure. In a nutshell. Okay. So Pinterest, everybody thinks Pinterest is like, just, you know, you put up a picture and then you pin it because you like it, but there's actually a strategy behind Pinterest. And a lot of the bloggers are, they are on that like white on rice. I'm telling you, it is crazy because you can put a link on your, <clears throat> on your uh, pins to go wherever you want. So what you would do is if you want to optimize Pinterest, you'd probably set up a business account and this way you can, your pins are more optimized and you want to have, they're called like long pins, which are like, instead of just little short pictures. So this way they take up more of the page. That would be a good practice is to start creating pins on Canva that are long with nice, big, um, you know, words so people can see it. And then um, you want to use keywords just like Google, you know, Google would use because actually Pinterest is a search engine. People don't realize that they think it's it's just like social media. It's not. It's actually a search engine. So if you optimize all of your tags and your keywords for to being found, like let's say I am selling, you know, beads and tassels, I would be putting in the very first, you know, word, the first 40 characters, you know, beads and tassels, and I would put it in a nice way that people can read it, you know, not mm -hmm beads and tassels and keyword stuffing. But um, are you looking for interesting beads and tassels for your craft? That would maybe be the first line. And then you drive them right to your Etsy shop or your website through your link. You're allowed to have the link. 
And that has been fantastic. I get most of my blog traffic from Pinterest. That's terrific for uh, your for business blog. chic mama. Yes, uh, that's I, business chic mama consists of YouTube channel, um, you know, my courses, and also um, my, you know, just a little couple of different blogs and a little bit of everything is kind of multi, it, it evolved again from just nothing. And I just kind of just kept putting stuff out there. So yeah. How about you have so much going on? How about other tools? How do you stay organized? Is it to-do lists? Is it, what do you do? I need to learn how to use Trello because, I, you know, honestly, I don't even know how I, I I'm going to be honest with you. Don't follow my advice when it comes to organization because I am the, I'm not organized at all. <laughs> uh, I'm organized. It's weird. In my thoughts, what I do is I don't have a to-do list. It's kind of this mental list. Mm. Again, I probably wouldn't recommend this for most people, but I have been in business for 20 years, so I kind of can manage my mind. But honestly, um, this mine is like this to-do list. If you can do one or two tasks every day that will move your business forward, you're doing fantastic. So I focus on like, let's say today we're doing our interview and I'm probably going to do a Facebook Live. That is the main thing for my business that I'm going to focus on because that I will put it onto YouTube and then the whole ball will be rolling. So, you know, there's so many ways to organize and I've definitely, I haven't checked out Trello. Have you heard of Trello yet? Heard of it. I haven't used it. Though. Yeah. Everyone's like raving about it. So you, cause you can put on your daily tasks, you can outsource them and you can move them around. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to check that out because when I do want to become organized, I'm going to use Trello, yeah. but everyone has their own system. I would just would recommend if you have too much on your to-do list, it gets overwhelming. Just pick one thing you need to do to move the needle forward for the yeah. day. And that's all. It, and then you don't feel overwhelmed. It's like, oh, I did my task. Let me do something else. And that's yeah. kind of, it's this mental game. That's good. I uh, would be completely useless without my to-do list. I oh. actually use an app called Todoist. Uh-huh. And I, at one point, switched browsers because they had, I think it was a, a Firefox extension, and I switched browsers because it was so good. And I love it. It really keep it allows you to, uh, but this, this is very much a, uh, a product placement that we're not getting paid for a kind of interview. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's something where it allows you to prioritize one, two, three, four, and you can look at it based on projects that you program into it. And it, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, to I, gotta, I always figure like, oh, by the time I get everything or uh, I've already would have done it. And that's my and I know it's, that's not a good way of thinking, but I have managed to have, you know, dozens of employees at one time and multiple stores. And so whatever it is, it's working for me. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. I wish I had a brain like that. Um, so this this has all been really good. We're just past 30 minutes. Um, one thing I do want to hit before we start to wind things up is when you're starting a business like this, let's say on Etsy, uh, you're going to put time into it. You're going to put effort into it. What are realistic expectations as far as ROI or even just as far as revenue? Um, it, you know, you can be sold a, a dream of making a million dollars, but realistically, what should you be expecting within three, six, 12 months, two years, five years? How should you go into it? Well, I think, again, most people, if they're starting out and they have no idea even what an email list is or how to scale their business or grow their business, uh, you know, you shouldn't be expecting to make, you know, thousands and thousands a month on Etsy in the beginning. I mean, I did get, I want to say I did get lucky because I hit the niche right. I was consistent with my products and I did fantastic. You know, now I'm a little bit on the decline because I'm not focusing my energy so much. I'm focusing it on growing this business. Mm -hmm. But um, I think for the average person, so let me give you an example, a case study. Uh, we started the Easiest Pie Beta group, mm -hmm. with 13 people. And um, for the first, I would say, including myself, well, that would be 14 because I opened an Etsy shop as well. And in a different, you know, it's business chic mama, but it's not 
it, it's kind of just inspiration and it's nothing really specific. I just wanted to kind of open a shop up. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, you know, people are, are starting and they're, they really have nothing. They really are starting from ground zero. So you cannot expect to make dozens and dozens of sales in your first month. It's just not going to happen. But so, for example, I have one girl that uh, she opened. Uh, it's called Dance Flip Cheer. And she is focusing on all that whole niche, which actually we're finding out is a really good niche because she's already made, I think it's about 13 sales in the past mm -hmm. few weeks. Now we are going into Christmas and that does, you know, that definitely is consideration. We have to think about those things. But realistically, I think you can make, you know, several, probably several dozen sales in the beginning if you find the right niche, if you find products that are people are looking for. But I also have another girl who opened this fantastic shop with printables, beautiful floral prints, and she's been working it just like we've been doing in the uh, in the course. And she hasn't made she has some friends and family sales, but not an organic sale yet. Yeah. And we're we're trying to figure out what is going on because she is getting views in her shop, but no sales yet. But we're going to figure it out. And that's the difference between people not working with a coach and people that just will like throw the idea out of the window. You know, they're like, oh, this isn't working. We're going to figure out why you know, what is it? Is it the price point? Is it, are there not enough photos or are the descriptions wrong? Why are people, is it not converting? So that's um, two examples in uh, with my, my students, just so you can see. And then I had another girl that just made her first sale. So um, if you're willing to now, once you get your whole, you know, you know, there's interest there, you've made a few sales. If you're interested in a strategy, which would be, okay, I have my sales. I kind of know my market now. Let me continue to add products and see what's working. And now let me add an email list. Let me go ahead and do Pinterest. Or maybe I'm going to do my social media and get all these touch points out to the web. So then you can start driving traffic to your Etsy shop. And that's more of a strategy instead of just those tactics. You know, yeah. that's what I'm probably going to talk about if I do my Facebook Live strategy versus tactics. Awesome. Very good. So I, we've hit a lot of touch points here. You have a fast talker, right? <laughs> no, it's been fantastic. So um, let's wind up with a couple questions here. This is what I like to ask everybody. Number one, uh, what music gets you through the day? Uh, let's see. When I, uh, I love worship music. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd ever say that. That's the funniest thing in the world. Like I, um, you know, I, I love all, I'm actually a pianist as well. I, I actually oh, cool. took 10 years of classical piano uh, when I was growing up. So uh, I love all kinds of music, but lately just listening to the words of worship music, like mm -hmm. it's like, it's so inspiring because you realize you're not alone in your battle. That's what a lot of Christian music is, is really about that being, you know, that down in the dumps, but then how God lifts you up. And it's so inspiring because you realize you're not alone. You know, everyone is fighting a battle and that's where I just like to refresh people. That's like, I know someone's hurting and I want to kind of refresh people. So I have an interesting uh, story to go with that. I'm a, I've been a drummer since I was 13 years old and now I'm 21. So it, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, well, you know, you could look like you're 21. Seriously. Thank you. Um <laughs> It's been, I'm 42 this year and I've been a drummer for a long time. I've played a lot of different places and a lot of those places have been bars. And when you go to a bar and you're there all night and people are drinking, it is a, it's fun, but it's also kind of an illusion in oh, yeah. some ways. And people are releasing. They've had a hard week there. It's been difficult and they just want to let loose and have a good time. I got some gigs maybe about 10, 12 years ago with a Presbyterian church in St. Louis, where I was from. And I'm not, a, I'm personally, I'm not very religious. I'm open and supportive to whatever people believe. And I said, well, the, a gig's a gig. I'm curious to see what this is like. So I went and played these gigs and it's a completely different feeling. Yeah. Instead of releasing and, and taking, you know, yeah. we're, we're talking about, uh, reaping versus sowing. Yeah. Uh, people were there to support each other, to feel uplifted, to yeah. feel community, and just I I got it. it. It was a very different feeling than playing other kinds of music. 
So hey, I, listen, I, I used to work in the bar business also when I was going through, um, you know, I'm not like an angel, like you might think I am, but I'm just saying I was, I did that whole bar business. I was, I was in the beer, the beer girl and all that stuff years, yeah. and years ago. And yeah, there came a point where it just is like, Oh, I can't do this anymore. And this was just supporting my endeavors going back to fashion design business, you know, fashion design school and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. I know what you mean. And it, you know, your environment, they always say you're going to be wherever you hang is where, what you're going to be. And if you're around uplifting, encouraging people, that's where you're going to be. If you're around people that are trying to drown their sorrows in alcohol, and then that's levels. So unfortunately that's the way it goes. But a lot of people can't see that they can't get past, you know, it's like a blindfold on a lot of people, unfortunately. And that's why it's important to know a lot of different types of people, because if you're just around one thing, that's all you're going, that's the, well, you just said it, so I don't need to repeat it. So. <laughs> um, okay, so next question. That's fun that we have music in common. Um, any, by the way, any specific worship artists that you like? Uh, I like Casting Crowns. I like mm -hmm. Lauren Daigle. I like um, basically all of the Third Day. Uh, they're mm -hmm. all fantastic. Yeah. Are you a fan of Switchfoot? They're kind of a uh -huh. little more crossover. I, like, I actually like, I'm pretty much, I, I just, yeah, I put on, there's a station called K-Love. It's, uh, it's great. Just got, it has everything on there. And that's kind of my go-to station that I listen to. Cool. And uh, final question along those lines, what beverage starts your day and what beverage is there for quitting time? <laughs> I'm kind of boring. Uh, that's okay. Morning. In the morning, I might just grab a, uh, you know, grab my water and maybe like a little bit of coffee just occasionally because I'm very, as you can see, this is like, this is not coffee. This is just my energy of, sure. of who I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then at night, I'm really like a water drinker, but I actually have my shake here. Okay. I always do like a protein shake. Um, I'm into health and fitness, and that's where my company, Oh My Bod, started with is, you know, health and fitness and fitness clothing. So that's kind of where I started years ago. And I've always just, uh, you know, went to the gym and I work out and I take try to take care of myself as best as I can. That's very, that's yeah. good stuff. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how people can find you. We have your uh, website, your YouTube, your Instagram. Um, where else would you like to direct people? That's it. You know, I, I'm always available. I try to answer all of my, you know, someone's asking me a question on YouTube or whatever social media platform or my, or even my uh, website. I try to answer every single question that comes in. I just feel it's, you know, as being a, a business owner, you've got to be responsible. When people are asking you something, you got to respond. So yeah. those of you that aren't doing that, you know, shame on you. Get outsourced it if you can't do it yourself. You don't leave yeah. people hanging. So yeah, you can find me on any of those and uh, love to connect with you. And if anyone is listening over audio, why don't you tell us what okay. we have on uh, screen here? Oh yeah, it's uh, businesscheekmama.com, uh, businesscheekmama on YouTube, Instagram. I'm not really so much right now. My game isn't Instagram so much, Business Chic Mama, even though I do have a little presence. I'm just not posting so much, but that will probably change as I continue to grow my touch points across the web. Very good. And um, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up here? No, just, you know, don't get discouraged. I always, I always like to encourage all my students that, um, you know, you really need to just remember how far you've come, even if it's one step because some people will start beating themselves up over the stuff they didn't do instead of celebrating the little successes that they did do. So I'm always saying, hey guys, remember you're only doing this three weeks and you've already gotten a sale. Don't want, I always tell them, don't, you're not the flower that's blooming yet. You're digging in the dirt. But remember you've always trying to encourage people to look at that. That's hard to do too. It's hard not to look at the past or yeah. look at what hasn't happened. Yet. All the time, I mean, all the time. That's what people do. So get out of that. If you're not, celebrate your success. That's awesome. Very good. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out our interview today. Uh, my name is Benjamin Portnoy. I've been talking with the uh, lovely, wonderful, talented 
<laughs> Stephanie Smith, and she has so much to offer. Make sure you check out her website at businesschicmama.com. And for more interviews like this one with Stephanie, go to www.sidehustleelevator.com. We have live and recorded uh, replays uh, from our YouTube interviews and all kinds of good tips, expert advice, and more. But you should definitely check out her her website because she has, I looked at your class, your courses, you have so much good stuff on there. It's getting there again. You know, everything is a work in progress. This business has only been, you know, my business chic mom is only uh, a year or two old. So um, I'm growing just like everybody else, you know? Well, I'd like to think we're always growing. Yeah. But thank <laughs> you so much for having me, Benjamin. I really appreciate our time together. Oh, I really enjoyed it. And thanks so much for your time. So guys, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Okay, bye guys.